Hello dear friends, welcome back to my channel, Rebecca here. Welcome, if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that little notification bell and it will uh, let you know when I have a new upload. What I have for you today is three Dollar Tree DIYs. So let's just go ahead and get started. If you want to know how I made this farmhouse screen door, keep watching. I'm using two Dollar Tree canvas frames, six by eight inches, two of the splatter screens, the home signs from Hobby Lobby, and any dowel rods of your choice. After removing the canvas from the wood frames, I'm going to use my uh, white chalk paint and I have some gray paint that I will dry brush to make the screen door look weathered. After laying out the two frames with the two Jenga blocks in between, take the dowel rod and cut those about an inch and a half to two inches that'll fit right there uh, in the middle of your screen door. And I use a popsicle stick to lay under those so that they're not falling all the way down to the paper. Going ahead, I pre-cut the first screen that fits uh, over the top part of the door and the little dowel rods. And I'm measuring uh, just with a marker for the second uh, screen. And be sure and wear some uh, safety wear for your eyes. Once you get this started, uh, I was actually uh, okay using my old scissors uh, to cut the screen. Lay the screens aside and get your paint and go ahead and, and give it a good a coat of paint. One coat will do. Of course, uh, lightly sanding any rough spots. I have put this frame all together with uh, uh, Elmer's wood glue because I may use this out on my back porch. After giving the screen door a good coat of the chalky white paint, go ahead and take the home sign and put a coat of paint on it as well. Dear friends, do give me a thumbs up on my video if you're enjoying this. And if you're new here, 
please hit that subscribe button and everyone hit that notification bell. It will alert you when I upload a new video. Even though I charged my staple gun for most of the day, I couldn't get it to work, so Mr. Fix-It uh, came in uh, to help. Mr. Fixit had a manual staple in his shop that he brought in and helped me with this project. He just loves to help. After lightly sanding or distressing all of your pieces, go ahead and take the gray paint and take your brush and just dry brush. Uh, actually, this could have been done uh, before the screen was put on, but either way, it still works out just fine. But just dry brush um, the some gray paint and you're going to make it look like it's weathered, you know, like a like an old farmhouse screen door. I just want to let everyone know that I'm also working on my summer home tour video. I'm so excited about uh, getting that up. I'm going to use some Elmer's wood glue and glue the home sign on the door. This is optional, but I added a little eye hook, just like what you would actually see on a farmhouse screen door. A last minute decision, I decided that I wanted to put a small handle on my door. So I found two teeny tiny wood beads and I have cut a piece of a dowel rod to fit on top of the beads. I'll glue all that with wood glue and let that set up and then I'll come back and I will uh, paint that.
can use this as a shelf sitter or you can put a little a sawtooth hanger on the back to hang it on the wall, whichever one you prefer. If you would like to learn how to make this home sign, keep watching. Now I have to give credit uh, to Heidi Sonbo uh, for showing this. She made one uh, in her DIYs and I immediately linked in and copied this little home sign and knew that I wanted to make one. So if you have not seen any of her DIYs after watching my video, go ahead and link over to her channel and see how she made her uh, home sign. After removing the canvas from the frame and giving it a light sanding, I'm just laying the frame on this uh, paper. It's about a five by seven. So I'm gonna cut that to, to the frame so that I can glue it on the back side of the frame. And then I'm gonna give the frame a coat of white paint. After giving the frame a coat of my chalky white paint, uh, I decided that I wanted to add a little more support on the back of the frame than just the paper itself. So taking the frame, laying it over a couple of the craft sticks uh, that I had got from Walmart, uh, I'm just gonna take a pencil and trace that and be sure and use your eyewear and um, cut those ends off and I'm going to use those for the top and bottom on the back just for a added little bit of added support. Using the green garland, I believe this came from the Dollar Tree probably back around the Christmas holiday maybe, but I'm just going to take that sort of measure where I want it to go and I'm going to twist that around, wrap it about three times, cut the ends, and then twist that as well. Turning the frame over, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, four dabs of hot glue on each corner and add the, the paper and then I'm gonna glue on the craft sticks on the top and on the bottom for that added support. I will then turn, turn it over back to the front and glue on the little wreath.
If you want this little home sign, I'm not going to put the link below. I want you to go over to uh, Heidi's channel and look at what she did with hers, and she has the link there. Thanks, Heidi, for sharing this DIY. I just fell in love with mine. What do you think? For this third DIY, you're going to need the craft paper from the Dollar Tree, four jumbo craft sticks, and I have some six inch stencil letters. Also going to need my white chalk paint and hot glue gun and some E6000. I cut about eight and three quarters, almost nine inches. Uh, I used, actually, I used a vegetable knife to cut this with a little sandpaper and the edges came out so smooth. Taking some twine or jute string, I'm just gonna cut off a little piece. I'm gonna glue this onto one of the craft sticks using the E6000. Just a little uh, for each string where it will hold the sign along with some of my uh, hot glue. I'm going to add some hot glue on the jumbo craft stick and then add the craft paper on top of this. Add more hot glue on the craft paper and then add the top jumbo craft stick and hold that until it dries for just a moment and let it set up. Taking my pencil and my stencils, which is going to spell out farmhouse, I'm going to use one of the craft sticks between each letter, starting from the top. And then I'm going to trace all of the letterings all the way to the bottom.
These stencils, my husband said they have probably been in his family for about three generations and thought maybe they came over on the Mayflower. I had to compromise a little bit with this letter uh, E, so um, it was missing some parts, so just went ahead and used the letter L to finish out the bottom. After you're done with your last letter, letter E in farmhouse, I'm measuring uh, two links down, uh, two links down uh, with the craft stick, and then I'm going to take my pencil and trace across that and cut that off, and then glue both of the craft sticks, sandwiching the craft paper in between. Taking a white paint marker that I had bought for a previous project but I didn't use, I'm going to take this paint marker and outline all of the letters that I just drew on there. I also painted the top and bottom craft stick of the sign. After outlining all of the letters, I'm going to take my white chalky paint and put a thin layer in between on all of the letters. After the paint has dried, I'm going to lightly sand the chalky paint where maybe there may have been some uneven uh, paint. And just lightly sand that and it'll be all ready to hang on the wall. Thanks for watching. Until my next video, have a good day.